The Story of Moses Fleetwood Walker. In 1947, Jackie Robinson signed with the Brooklyn Dodgers, breaking Major League Baseball's color barrier. A lot was made about his signing, but no one ever asked the question, how did that color barrier start to begin with? The answer possibly lies with Moses Fleetwood Walker. And this is his story. Moses Fleetwood Walker is the forgotten man who actually integrated the game of baseball. Walker was born in Mount Pleasant, Ohio on October 7, 1856. Walker was well educated and played baseball throughout his privileged childhood. He eventually began playing at the varsity level for Steubenville High School. After high school in 1871, he enrolled in Oberlin College, where he became the team's star catcher. He eventually transferred and began playing baseball for the University of Michigan. After college, Walker rose his way up in the minor league rankings with far-fetched hopes that one day he would get an opportunity to play in the major leagues. Walker was contacted by a former sports writer, William Voltz, who is now a manager for the Toledo Blue Stockings of the Northwestern League. He eagerly accepted Volt's offer and agreed to play catcher, helping the team to a championship that year. And got his opportunity and made his Major League Baseball debut for the Toledo Blue Stockings. With that being said, he will never be credited as being the first black man to play Major League Baseball because of his longing conflict between himself and white society in a time of racial disparity. Jackie Robinson is profoundly and nationally known as the man who broke the color barrier. Robinson's legacy and accomplishments are celebrated throughout the country. There is even a Jackie Robinson Day, where everyone in Major League Baseball wears the number 42 out of respect for him breaking the color barrier. Robinson came along nearly 63 years after Walker. On April 15, 1947, Jackie Robinson made his professional baseball debut for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Despite the courage and bravery Robinson displayed throughout his career, he truly was not the first black man to play Major League Baseball. That does not in any way discredit and take away Robinson's accomplishments and what he did for the game. It is just unfair that Walker is not noted and glorified as the man who integrated the game of baseball. Moses Walker, like Robinson, had to withstand assaults of racial bigotry. Walker and Robinson both experienced racial slurs directed towards them and received constant death threats throughout their respective careers. However, the racism directed towards Robinson is pale in comparison to what Walker went through 63 years earlier. Robinson had Branch Rickey, Brooklyn Dodgers owner, in his corner from the beginning to the end of his professional career. In contrast, no one was concerned with Moses Walker's well-being and the hardships he had endured. Walker had absolutely no one. He was out there fighting for his life by himself. Difficulties came not only from other teams, but from his own team as well. For instance, Blue Stockings pitcher Tony Mullane was quoted in saying, Walker was the best catcher I ever worked with, but I disliked a Negro, and whenever I had to pitch to him, I used to pitch anything I wanted without looking at his signals. The majority of the Blue Stockings shared the same point of view possessed by Mullane. This exemplifies the harsh racism Walker commonly had to endure throughout his professional baseball career. Even before Moses Walker's first professional baseball game, he already had lofty and unreasonable expectations set for him. At this time, there were no protective equipment, not even gloves. As a result, Walker was injured most of the season, or spent time in the outfield to rest minor injuries. In 1984 season, Walker suffered a season-ending injury, which subsequently cost him his job and knocked him back down to the minor leagues. After the 1884 season, Walker bounced around different minor league teams until 1889. Walker never made it back to the major leagues after his initial season. Many believe that the racial pressures and the insurmountable expectations predetermined for him by others led to Walker's eventual downfall. In 1889, the Jim Crow laws aligned with Major League Baseball, which permitted any African American from playing professional baseball. Moses Fleetwood Walker would ultimately become the first known black to play on an all-white professional team. Didn't last very long, however, before a movement that would basically say, if you allow black to play with you, you can't play with us. A gentleman's agreement. From this time forward until Jackie Robinson Baseball adopted an unofficial color line that would last for over 60 years. Walker's baseball career was cut short as he was forced to step away from the game. When Moses Walker left baseball, he became a businessman and later on an advocate for black nationalism. In April of 1891, Walker suffered a run-in with the law, which was detrimental to his character and his legacy. Walker was sought out and attacked by a mob of white men. 
In the attack, Walker stabbed and killed a white man by the name of Patrick Murray. Walker was charged with second-degree murder where he claimed self-defense and was later acquitted by a jury for the charges placed upon him. Moses Walker's run-in with the law eventually led him to get involved with black nationalism. In 1908, Walker published his own book titled Our Home Colony, a treatise on the past, present, and future of the Negro race in America. This book ignited white society, which not only negatively affected himself, but his family. Walker spoke on right racism first equivocally, and then with anger, and finally with poise. Walker shared his idea on how racism and the Jim Crow laws were unfair and unjust to the black community. Walker held the belief that racial integration would never be accomplished within the United States, as blacks and whites would never be able to coexist with one another. The message Walker conveyed in this book caused his accomplishments to subside and eventually diminish within American society. It is a seemingly rare occurrence when professional athletes take a political stance. Moses Walker's accomplishments are unknown and his legacy has been erased because he shared his political views with society. One can put Moses Walker's name in the same category as Tommy Smith, Peter Norman, and John Carlos, Pat Tillman, Mahmoud Abdul Raif, Muhammad Ali, Jackie Robinson, and Brant Tricky for his political activism within society. Although Walker acted upon his political opinion on black nationalism after his professional career, it still ruined his name. Walker's book, along with the charges brought upon him for killing of a white man, unfortunately cost him as being known as the man to integrate baseball. Walker's disputes with white society led to the false pretense that Jackie Robinson actually integrated the game of baseball. It is a tragedy that Moses Walker does not receive the recognition he deserves in overcoming a racial divide during the post-Civil War era. Moses Walker should be celebrated for what he did, and it's a shame that he is not.